So following on from the previous section on the product dynamic correlation coefficient, we move into linear regression. Now, when you met scatter graphs as part of GCSE maths, um, one of the things that you would have to do is draw a line of best fit. So the regression line, you can kind of imagine, is the best line of best fit that you could draw. And we can calculate the equation of that line um, that we can then use to make predictions. Okay, um, That's essentially what we're doing here. Now, a regression line is otherwise referred to as a least squares regression line. Now, the reason why we talk about least squares and what that means is it's really looking at minimizing the squares of the residuals. Now, residuals we haven't explained yet. That's coming up in a future video. Um, essentially, the way to think about it is this. If you've got some data points, like so, and you've got, you've got your regression line, which you can imagine is your best line of best fit. Um, essentially, what you're trying to do is finding those distances there, we are trying to minimize them. So the vertical distances from the points to the line, uh, and that gives you your line. So you're trying to minimize those vertical distances. Now, because uh, in the calculation, uh, if you do the that y value, take away that y value, and you do that for all of them, these will be positive, these will be negative. So that y value, take away that y value will be negative. So the issue then becomes, OK, well, they're all going to start cancelling one another out. So the way to avoid that, in a similar way to how you do the standard deviation formula, is that you square them all. So that's where you start to minimize the squares of those distances and hence the least squares regression line. Okay, so that's where the name really comes from. Now you'll notice that there are two uh, formulae that you have here. Now these are the formulae given to you in the formula booklet. Okay, so the bits that you will recognize is the SXY, SXX, and SYY. So they are the same calculations that we had in the previous section. So that's all good. So that's something that we've seen before. And these are the regression lines. And you can see that they're in the form of Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. So as you kind of expect from uh, an equation of a line. And you can see that the point that they're going through is X bar, Y bar. So actually what you find is that any regression line will always go through x bar, y bar. So if we had a few more points over here, for example, then this point, the mean point, the regression line will always go through it. Okay? So you might still be going, well, okay, that's all well and good. Um, where has that calculation come from? Okay, where's the formula come from for that? Well, I'm going to be going through that in the next video uh, and deriving it. It is going to be an extension video uh, because you wouldn't need to replicate the exam. You don't need to have seen the derivation of it. Um, but you might, I'm putting it there for interest. Okay. Um, you might also be wondering, well, why are there two? Why, are, why have we got this y on x and x on y regression line? Why are we getting two of them? Well, the reason why there are two is that they come from two subtly different calculations. The y on x one is looking at uh, minimizing the squares of those vertical distances, whereas the x on y minimizes the squares of the horizontal distances. Now, the consequence of that is that the two regression lines that you get are not necessarily going to be the same. That would only happen if um, the regression line that you got was um, y equals x, for example. Okay, so it would it would have to have um, yeah, it would have to be y equals x or or something like that, or some kind of like um, translation of that. So it'd have to have that gradient, wouldn't it? Um, so just trying to think. So y equals x, 
would definitely be 1. Yeah, it would have to be that. It would just have to be y equals x. Um, and of course, not all regression lines are going to be that. So the, that issue that you're going to have is that in minimising the vertical distances is going to get you a different result if you minimise the horizontal distances in the general case. So um, that is the consequence that you get. And you might be going, OK, well, right. So there's two different ways of calculating the regression line, right? So in what cases would you use them? OK, what, what's the difference? Well, it, depending on the context of the problem, um, in some cases, we're going to be looking at uh, random on random or uh, non-random on random. And uh, that's going to um, create some differences there. OK, so that's one thing that we're going to explain in a later video. But it's also down to which one you use to predict values. So the y on x regression line that you use here, you use this when uh, you have an x value and you want to predict a y value. OK, so that's when you use the y on x regression line. And you can kind of imagine that that's in the majority of cases where you've got a non-random on the horizontal axis. Uh, so it might be a control variable, for example, on the horizontal axis. Then you're going to use that. You're going to go, right, I've got this amount of fertilizer. What will be the yield of my crop, for example? OK, that'd be quite a common thing to use. Whereas if uh, you have uh, random on random, you might want to use that or might want to do this, the uh, x on y regression line, where you have a y value and you want to predict the x value. So if you want the y value, based on an, on an x value that you have, then you use the y on x. And if you want the x value and you're given a y value, you use x on y. So that then tells you which of the two lines you need to calculate. OK? So um, just to kind of be clear on this graph, I'm just kind of um, thinking about the way that I've drawn it. Don't kind of get, get misled into thinking that the two lines give you the same equation, because it's not. Um, so in, in the way that I've drawn this, OK, uh, it makes it out as if those two lines are going to be the same when they're not. OK, so just to be clear on that. So some of this uh, is using results that we have previously considered. So a lot of it is just going to be substituting into formula. Um, and calculating the regression line and then using it. Uh, we're also going to need to consider a couple of other bits along the way um, as we discuss how to uh, best understand the data that we have been given.